Let's start with some football notes just before Ty Mattingly will join us. Uh, day of camp has come and gone. There were rainstorms pretty heavy yeah, at the I might, tail end. I wasn't down, but I guess they probably went in at the end. Yeah, I would think so, especially with the lightning in the area today. The battle between Gary Bohannon and Jake Retzleff, uh continues. We kind of feel like, you know, it's pretty close to a decision. Uh, it has to be coming. There's not another media availability right until Friday. Um, and so they're going to get a lot of work done between here and there without us checking on them yeah. and, and seeing what that's like. But um, but so far, so far, they're just playing it 50-50. Uh, yeah, and they're, and they're, 50, 50. They're, they're sharing reps. And, and it's an interesting thing. We talked about this last week. Coming out of spring ball, I was certain it would be Jake because, frankly, Gary – couldn't throw it the way he used to be able to throw right. it. He just was not healthy. And he came on our show. We, we, we love his personality. We love his leadership. We love his athleticism. But watching him throw the ball, we're just thinking if you can't make the throws, if you can't throw a comeback and you can't throw the deep ball the way you used to, it's going to be hard. This thing's good. this is Jake's job now. Um, but, but Gary explained to everybody on the media last week that he went and had uh, some injections in his shoulder, had uh, stem cell injections. A week later, he's been pain-free ever since, and he's got his full range of motion. And uh, we'll ask Ty because Ty's been out watching practice. But in the, in the times that I've been able to see him, he looks like the old guy that was playing at Baylor, throwing deep balls and throwing outs and doing all that. So all of a sudden, we had a quarterback race on our hands. And, and now uh, Gary has got a reputation of taking care of the football. Yeah. And to me, that's the most important thing. If he can make all the throws and take care of the football, he could be the guy. And he, 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 was, he was right there bearing down on Jake. And there was times in this last week where I'm like, I think he's past Jake because he's taking care of the ball better. So uh, it's a quarterback battle. They're splitting reps. And I think maybe by the end of this week, we'll, we'll have a starter named. I was at practice the other day. He faked one way, went the other way, and went 50 yards down the sideline. Yeah, that's, like, that's what he brings. You know what? That's, that's something. Yeah. Uh, ben Bywater uh, out for the season. We know that. There haven't been any significant camp injuries so far. Not even nicks and scratches that have kept people out, which has been interesting because we're right near the midway point where they'll start honing down to southern Illinois here in mm -hmm. just a moment. Hey, that's good news. Yeah. I remember no, how many fell last year during fall camp. Yeah, and you, and you do your best to manage. you got to do enough work to get better, but you'll go right up to that line where you try not to risk injury as much as you possibly can. So, um, you know, I was watching some film last night. Um, Jeff was there. And uh, Jeff Chapman was there, and our, my son Kellen was there. So Gavin's like, do you guys want to see a couple of plays? And so he got the film out. We watched some plays from practice. And uh, I want to tell you something. Darius Laster, who sat here for this show, is having an unbelievable fall camp. Yeah. He, he is making plays every single day. Whether he's covered or not, he's catching the ball. He, he's been one of the stars of fall camp to me, is Darius Laster. I think he's ready for a breakout big-time season, which I is agree. going to be fun. I agree. And he's been here when he said, hey, I know the playbook now. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's such a difference when they call an audible and you're like, uh, am I going left yeah. or am I going right? And, and I'm, I'm going to give everybody else one other guy's name that nobody's talked about, not me, not you, nobody, um, that in fall camp showed up and everybody's going, what in the world is going on? This guy is a wrecking machine. Tanner Wall. Tanner Wall. At safety. He's okay. just killing people. Like, he's he's the old school kind of safety. I'm thinking of, uh, you know, like, the, BYU has had a reputation of having safeties that they come downhill, and when they come downhill, there's been a number of them that you go, oh, man, that guy's just going to smack somebody. Yeah. Um, and these first, when they've been had pads on and they're hitting, he's literally destroying people out there and running with great quickness and looking really, really good. Awesome. That's not a name we talked about no. that all of a sudden is jumping off the page. Like, this guy's going to play and he's going to hit some people out there. Great, great stuff. Kenny from Salt Lake City on the Wise Guys. Good to have you on the live stream. LJ Martin, one of 12 Big 12 running backs on the preseason Doak Walk Walker Doak Walker watch list as the nation's best running back. Luke Staley won that back in 2000. One Keanu Hill's transition to tight end that led Aaron Roderick to say, we should have made that decision earlier. Mm -hmm. um, you can read my story on Keanu at Deseret.com. Just a moment ago, I got a text back from Lloyd, his yeah, dad. Yeah. His dad wasn't all that excited about moving from receiver to tight end. He's a big-time receiver himself right. at Texas Tech. But uh, – he got. It. He talked to some friends. He goes, you know what? I think that might be right. Anyway, he just texted back to thank. <laughs> I sent him the story, and he said thank you. We'll see uh, Lloyd Hill, uh, one of the greats 
in Texas high school history uh, to come watch his kid play a different position. And he looks just fine at tight end. Oh, he's, he's a mismatch out there, which is great. So that's at Deseret.com. Southern Illinois, by the way, today ranked number 11 in the coaches' FCS poll. They'll be here in Provo in a couple of weeks. Yeah, this is a very good FCS football team. I mean, they're they're well coached. They they have talent, especially in the skill positions. I still say, even a you know a top twenty FCS program, um, a team like BYU should wear a team like Southern Illinois down by the time they get midway through the third quarter, and they should be able to impose their will and 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 physically manhandling up front on both sides of the ball. And that, that should be the difference. There's just not enough bigs to go around for FBS and FCS. That's the problem. There's really good skill players yeah. in FCS, but there's not enough big guys to go around. Saratoga so. Springs is in the house. Uh, the AP Top 25 preseason poll is out today. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. After further review, we're back tomorrow night. Uh, some details on that straight ahead. There was an interesting poll put out on college rivalries that will be fun to tackle. So... This is the 1984 edition the Deseret News just put together uh, on the anniversary of the national championship team. It's uh, full of stories. you got Blaine is written about in there. Uh, some of the guys on our show, uh, Mark Bellini, uh, Trevor Maddich, Kelly Smith. Uh, there's a lot of cool things, and, um, and it's, it's just now available. In fact, these are off the presses. A lot of people don't even we, have these, Blaine. I, I'm looking here. Have we? And I'm just I'm just uh, going going through this, and you helped put this together, didn't you, Dave? I wrote three. I got three articles. Yeah, you, you, in there. Dave's part of this. But the cover I like. As, awesome as, too, as I'm there. looking through this, who have we? We've had almost everybody on well, in yeah. this on our it's show. It's because we're the wise guys on this show. Um, from from Mark Bellini to we haven't had Adam Haysbert yet though. No. And Brenda wants to us to get Adam on. She said, "Hey, you can order yours at deseret.com slash nineteen eighty four. It's like 15 bucks. It's also going to be at the bookstore, a Deseret book. Anyway, it's awesome. It's 1984, everything. Uh, and you know, there's a lot of things in there. You, you, you'll go, huh, didn't know that. Uh, and so we hope you enjoy it. And um, so look for it. And then Deseret.com slash 1984 is how you can get your own without having to go outside and, and buy it. This By is, the way. This is fun. This, isn't I, it cool? Yeah, I'm loving this. I'm just breezing through it and loving it. That's pretty cool. Uh, BYU SN Game Day, our two-hour season premiere, August 31st, 4 o'clock Mountain Time on BYU TV and ESPN+. Plus. Southern Illinois kicks at 6 on ESPN+. Plus. Post game back on BYU TV and ESPN+. Plus. We're looking forward to that. We, every you, time we did, do a show, we're close to the did, kickoff. Did you remind people about After Further Review? Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, I'm going to remind people. So After Further Review, we're how many shows in? We're three shows in now? Last week we did the schedule yeah, show. Three. The week before we did the touchdown show. Tomorrow's the third show. Yeah, so tomorrow's our third show. Um, we're doing, starting to do player profiles on the show tomorrow, so make sure you watch AFR tomorrow. Um, it's available at 5 p.m. on the BYU TV app, um, BYUTV.org. Make sure you check that out. It'll be a fun show tomorrow. AP Top 25, did we already say that? I don't think we did. The preseason poll out today. George is number one. Of course they are. And then in the Big 12, Utah's at 12. And then 17's Oak State, 18's K-State, 21's Arizona, 22 is Kansas. I love that to four of the five are coming to Provo. BYU's got Oklahoma State, Kansas State, Arizona, Kansas all at home. And they play Utah on the road. And I'm not sure in that rivalry that a home really matters that much. I think I think they got a great shot at going up there and so, taking care of business. Interesting. It tells you that the national um, people that in media respect the league as being deep, but don't think they have a top ten team. Interesting, huh? Yeah, that is interesting. So, Steve, can you grab me a water? Hey, here's next one. You got another? I got Ready? one right here. Yeah. One, two. Thank you. On television, we completed a pass. Or on, <laughs> on a live stream, we the, completed a pass. The magic continues. Yeah. Men's basketball, the non-conference schedule released today. We rolled it out on BYU Sports Nation uh, earlier this morning, uh, just as it was, it was sent out to everybody. So this is it. This is the first chance to get to see all these new guys. Um, there will be some events like uh, Midnight Madness kind of thing and a couple other things where, where you can get over there. But as far as games go, yep. uh, October 30th is the only exhibition game. It's 
Colorado Christian. That'll be on BYU TV. And they played them before, if I remember. Haven't yeah. you and I done a game with BYU and Colorado Christian? Maybe another feels exhibition. Feels like it. Feels like it. But that'll be our first night of, of when when we see Kevin Young on the sideline right. in a game. Right. And uh, and all his new guys. Yeah. And then no- November 5th is the actual opener, Central Arkansas. That's not election night. I don't think we've ever had a game on election no, night. No. It it's going to seem strange. Yeah. yeah. We have a football be and a basketball game that day, right? Uh, no, that's on a Tuesday. Oh, okay. I was, I'm losing my mind. I'm <laughs> but losing my mind. November 8th, uh, Riverside is at the Marriott Center. And then the 13th, Queens. Right. Then you get into our first double header. Right. That's when we do a football game. That's Arizona football game that day, but also Idaho yeah. in the Marriott Center. Mississippi Valley State is on the 23rd. Also a doubleheader day, BYU's at Arizona State in right. football. So, so you and I will do a studio show from here for a game day show and then, and then, then call, call the basketball the game. game. So, yeah. um, And then uh, November 28th is Old Miss um, in San Diego uh, or for Thanksgiving. How so. cool is that? You got all the football games on Thanksgiving. You got your family together, and then at night you've got the Cougs. Yep, yep. In, so. a, in a huge game against a really good team. Yeah. Yep, down in San Diego. The, the next moment. night, they're either going to play Purdue or NC State. Right. So those two will meet on the 28th. Part, and part then, of a tournament. Yeah, hopefully they can take out uh, Ole Miss and then get a shot at Purdue who's in the national championship Right, and, and the real, the only real, the only road game of the entire preseason schedule, and they do this by design, they did it last year, December 3rd, they're going to go play at Providence all the way back on the East Coast. That'll be a quad one. Yeah. Very similar pattern to last year's where they played San Diego State. But although it was at home, mm-hmm. and they were ranked seventeenth, and they beat them, and all of a sudden you got an RPI boost. Right. Then they went to Vegas, and they beat NC State and Arizona State, and all of a sudden they're flying high with an RPI that stayed good the whole season. Right. Uh, and so this year you got Providence instead of San Diego State. Yeah. And on the road, and then you have the two neutral games. Right. If you get if you can get a Purdue, you know. Or you know, yeah. and, and if Ole Miss. You say you get both of those games. Those those are the ones that are going to help your RPI early. Um, and then uh, December 11th, Fresno State. That's a good game. Is this going to be in the Marriott Center? And that's a you know usually have talent. They have some long athletic people. December 14th, Wyoming. That's going to be in the Delta Center. And we're we're trying to figure out whether or not we're going to have that one. You and I may have that well, one. I hope we do. That was going to be in Laramie. Um, but what BYU did is they asked, hey, can we, can we move that? We need a Delta Center game. And we need an opponent that people want to drive to Salt Lake and see. Um, and if, if you'll do that, we'll go to Laramie the following year. So right. they extended the series in Wyoming. It's like, that gives us three games with BYU. We're in. Yep. And they host the football team right. uh, next month. And so um, for, you know, Wyoming's getting plenty of... They're getting plenty of BYU. Right. Florida A&M is December 20th, and that's it for the non-conference because Big 12 plays 20 games this year instead of 18, and that means they're going to start a week earlier. So December 30th or the 31st is when the first Big 12 game right. will be. So one of the changes is instead of those holiday games, you know, hey, bring your family for five bucks a seat or whatever, yeah. yet those don't exist. The the only thing, there'll be a long break. Yeah, a break, and it's good because Ten days. Fi- finals falls in that time, which is good for the va- basketball team. But, um, yeah, it's, it's a big break, and then they kick it off, and this league is going to be great again this year. I haven't seen the preseason polls for the Big 12 yet, but no, th- they will think there's top 10 teams in the Big 12 in basketball. And we think we'll get the Big 12 schedule. Uh, in the next month. Yeah. Last year they released we, it on the on September 26th. And we, we already reviewed on the show, we know who BYU plays and where. Yeah. So so you know the teams that they're going to play, who they play home and homes with, who they're going to play on the road and who they play only at home. We just don't know the rollout of the schedule yet, and we should have that in the next month. Let's cover Cougars in the NFL. Um, the rosters will be cut to 53 on August 27th, so you have 15 days to make your squad uh, Zach Wilson, I thought, played really well. Yeah. 10 of 13 for 117 yards for the Broncos, and his uh, quarterback rating was a 103. He looked he looked like he was in command. He had a, he had a higher rating than Bo Nix, who also played great. Yeah. Bo Ricks had a 102. I'm Bo curious Nicks. to see what's going to what's gonna shake down there. But it's, they're back. Uh, we'll have the schedule. Uh, the, he's on back on TV Sunday night. Yeah. Keaton Slovis, uh, 3 of 5, 39 yards, led the Colts on a touchdown drive. Great to see him healthy. Yeah. Remember, we hadn't seen him. In a football game since the Texas game. Yeah, that's right. And Jaron Hall had a, a game-winning drive. Um, 7 of 16 on the game, 63 yards. But that drive uh, drove down. They kicked a field goal and won the game. 
Aiden Robbins rushed for six yards, got an end zone visit for his first NFL touchdown, even in the preseason. Chris Brooks, they got him the ball 12 times. Yeah, they really worked him. 40 yards for Miami. But how about this guy? Yeah, Ryan Rico, um, he punted the ball three times, 56-yard average. He's got a shot at making that <laughs> team. I'm telling you, once he makes it and he's in the right place, he's going to be in the league for a long, long time. He's going to be yeah. the next Lee Johnson. Yeah, I saw those numbers and I thought, what a great first impression three times. Right. Bombing punts. All right, here's the situation Thursday. Eagles are at the Patriots with Sony, Sione Taki Taki. We're going to see more of the regulars in this week. Right. Uh, right. Now that we're done with the first game. So Sione Taki Taki, NFL Network, Thursday night. Yeah, Saturday there's a number of games. The Falcons with Tyler Algier at the Ravens with Kyle Van Noy. The Bengals with Ryan Rico that we just talked about are at the Bears. Texans with Max Tooley host the Giants. The Giants had Caleb Hayes on their team, and they released him. And then the Broncos picked him yeah, up today. Immediately. So more so. on Caleb in a moment. Yeah, good stuff. Um, the, uh, the Vikings with Jaron Hall are at the Browns, Aiden Robbins. Um, both those guys, a great chance to make the team. Uh, at the Bills, Zane Anderson uh, with Zane Anderson at the Steelers this week. Yeah, I think I have that right. It's wrong. Isn't Zane on the Packers? Let's see. Wait a minute. Is Zane on the Packers? That's right. He's not yeah, with the Bills. Yeah, that's my bad. Yep, you're right. That's you're my right. Bad. Uh, Lions and Chiefs, Kingsley Suamatia. Some are saying he's going to start. Start? Yeah. Offensive line. He's looking line. good. So, and uh, then the Commanders are at the Dolphins. Chris Brooks uh, currently with the Dolphins. Kyrie's Tonga and the Cardinals are at the Colts with Blake Freeland and Keaton Slovis. Fun for those guys to be here. The Jets at the Panthers. We don't have... We don't have to follow the Jets anymore. No, it's not nice. Good. But we'll follow the Panthers. Yeah, because Brady, Brady Christensen's there. Uh, Rams with Puka, who's week to week against the Chargers. Chris Wilcox. The Cowboys are at the Raiders. Raiders picked up Dax Milne. We, I was watching that Rams game, and the announcers were like, have you noticed we just keep comparing everybody to Puka? Like all the receivers. <laughs> well, Puka does this, and Puka does that. He didn't play, and all they did was talk about Puka in the broadcast. Interesting couple of games on Sunday. Yeah, the Saints with Taysom Hill, Jamal Williams, Samson Nakua are at the Niners with Fred Warner. That's at 6 p.m. Mountain Time on Fox. We think we'll see everybody in that yeah, for a little bit. Yeah. Uh, and then Zane Anderson with the Packers, with the Packers yes. is at the Broncos with Zach Wilson and Caleb Hayes. That's Sunday night at 6 o'clock on the NFL Network. I, th I think we're going to see a fair, a fair amount of... Zach again. He played the whole second half, yeah, right? I Almost the whole second him. half. So. so those are the Cougars in the NFL. We'll keep you posted on that. we got a lot of them in there, which yeah. is awesome. And uh, again, uh, cut down day is in 15 days. Right. So you gotta, you, you got to perform, got to produce. Right. Pressure's on all of them. So we should.